one that I have ever known Don't know where it goes But it's home to me and I walk alone I walk this empty street On the boulevard of broken dreams Where the city sleeps And I'm the only one and I walk alone beside me my shallow heart's the only thing that's beating sometimes i wish someone out there would find me till then i walk Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. How is it that I've waited so long to do this song? Fantastic song. Of course, the original one is very much an electric and an acoustic one. I'm going to show it to you all on an acoustic guitar, but you could definitely learn the parts on electric as well, particularly the power chords parts. I will talk about that as we get to them. First thing, of course, you need to do if you're going to play along with the original recording is capo on the first fret. But of course, if you're ever playing at a party and you don't have a capo, it doesn't matter. It's only if you want to play along with the original recording recording that that stuff becomes super important. Let's get to a close up and check out how to play it. So the first chord we need is an E minor chord. We're going to play that for two beats. Then we go to a G. Almost certainly going to be kind of rock G using fingers three and four on the thinnest two strings. Uh, other fingers in the usual spots for a G. And that one will be three and four. So probably the rhythm will be down, 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 down. Then we change to a D. Down, down, down to an A. Down, down, down. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. It's pretty simple. E minor, two beats. G, D, to A. I'm pretty sure Billy Joe is probably playing the A like that. So if you want to play the A just with your first finger doing a bar, make sure you don't play that thinner string because that sounds sounds all wrong if you do that. So if you want to play A that way or just play it whichever, whatever the most comfortable way is for you. So something to be aware of when it comes to rhythms here. Uh, there seems to be a pretty obvious, very simple strumming pattern that happens at least right at the beginning. Two, three and four. One and two. On its own, it doesn't kind of sound right for me. If I was ever performing this as like doing a cover version, I'm probably not going to keep it quite that simple. It works in the original recording because there's a lot more stuff going on. There's different layers of guitar and the guitar isn't like super up front there in that particular part. So I feel like even though that's the the bones of the, the rhythm, I feel it like... So keeping my hand moving, and I'm still thinking really one, two, three, and four. That's what's in my mind, but I'm letting myself play a bit more. There's a bit more down, down, There's a little bit more of that going on, and that's okay. I feel like it sounds better on your own to play it that way. If you were doing it with a band and you had an electric guitar, acoustic guitar, synths, and all of those other things going on, then you might want to simplify the parts. Green Day's are masters of these, having a few simple parts going on at the same time, and it really works together. This song is probably... Yeah, well, not probably. It is a, an amazing example of that. Having these the simple little melody lines going on there as a kind of a counterpart as well. The do 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 part comes in and out. It's really clever. So when it comes to learning like a very specific pattern, I would start off with this one, two, three, and four. One and two, three and four. Probably, but remember that you can absolutely change it up a little bit as you go along. E minor walks a G chord road. D is the only A I've ever E minor. Don't know G it goes, but D is home to A. I walk a E minor to G to D to A. E minor walks a G chord road. D is the only A I've ever E minor. Don't know G it goes, but D is home to A. I walk a E minor to G to D to A. 
and I run this G chord street D the ball of A of broken E minor Where the G chord sleeps D's the only A and I walk to E minor uh, uh, I walk to A, I walk to E minor To G, to D I walk to A, I walk to and then we're into the chorus. Now, the chorus chords you could play as open chords. They're C, G, D to E minor. But I really feel like if you're doing a song like this, it really helps to change the type of chord and the rhythm that you're doing between the verses and the choruses. It keeps it a lot more interesting for the listener. You hear on the original, it's all acoustic guitar, then come, there's a little build-up uh, uh, as it goes into the chorus where the electric guitar comes in and it becomes really big. It's the old Nirvana trick of the quiet verses and the big choruses. It really works. But if you're playing stuff on your own, which I imagine many of you are going to be playing this on an acoustic guitar on your own, you want to try and think of a way of playing it slightly different in the choruses, just to keep it a little bit interesting for the people who are listening. So at, at, at the very least, you probably want to change up the rhythm and move to all eighth note down strums and keep with the open chords. But if you can, what I'd recommend would be moving to bar chords at that point. So you've gone from all of this stuff here, the verses, all this, nice and simple, open chords. Last time round. I walk alone, I walk alone. This is a C uh, bar chord using the uh, first finger on the fifth string root. It's an A shape, muting the thinner string. If you're not familiar with your bar chords, head on over to the website in the intermediate course. There's lessons on how to play all of these grips and how to make sure that you get all of the notes that you want, none of the ones that you don't. All that stuff's super important. Uh, too much to go on in this particular lesson, although I will mention the first finger tip touching the thicker string. Really important there with the fifth string root chords. A lot of people miss that. So that's the C. Going to the G, hopefully all of you are familiar with that E shape, the root note being there, third fret of the thicker string. The D chord is exactly the same as the C, but up two frets. And then you could play E minor right up here, but it sounds to me more like the record to go down for that one. So using the open E minor, so C. My G chord's the D, the one, the E minor's beside me, C. G chord D is the only E minor that's beat and C. Some G I did someone out E minor would find me C to G to a B chord. Uh -huh. So we got that sequence the same all of the way through the C chord to G to D to E minor. The very last time though we have C to G to a B and that very specific rhythm one and two and three stop first so really making that change uh, I think I mentioned it but it didn't demonstrate that the pattern there rhythmically one and two and three and four and one two and three and just all down picks that really makes a big difference especially if you're keeping the verses if you're going to keep them that sparse into the chorus it really just it lifts the chorus up and it's the one thing that I see you'll see it as well especially if you do a few of my lessons you get used to me raving about the importance of dynamics in a performance when you see people not using dynamics when they play it just gets a bit the same people often use the same strumming pattern for the whole song same sort of chords similar vocal registry and it just like just gets a bit boring after three and a half four minutes so Keep it interesting for the people that are listening to you play and at least try and do something different between your verses and your choruses. It really makes such a huge difference. I'm going to give you a couple of the little overdub parts now as well, just because I think they work really well, particularly if you've got a jam buddy. If you're able to play this song with somebody else and you're able to play those additional lines, I think it just sounds really terrific. So let's check out some of those extra embellishments too. So the first little riff that happens in between the verses is this. So 
So relative to the capo, that's going to be the 4th fret to the 5th fret on the 4th string, then 4th fret to 2nd fret on the 3rd string, and back to the first two notes again. Remember, talking about the capo there, so if you're talking about the real frets, it will be one higher. But otherwise, 4, 5, 4, 2, 4, 5. Rhythm, 1, 2, and 3, 4, and 1. If you wanted to get really clever, you could try and play it along uh, E minor to G, D, A7. The other part that I think works really great as a second part is in the instrumental section, which is uh, one guitar playing the chorus chords and the other one doing this octave thing going... So the easiest way to, to talk about this is going to be uh, relative to the capo again. So if you're talking about, if, I'm, if you want to know the real fret number, if that's easier for you, just say, take what I say and add one each time. Uh, the shape here, this is an octave shape. So we've got here uh, the first finger in the second fret of the fourth string. And it's the tip of that first finger is muting the fifth string and the third string. Little finger is going down uh, three frets higher than it. So this would be the fifth fret. Uh, relative to the capo and it's also muting the thinner string and then I'm letting my second finger lay down and mute the thicker string so I can actually strum all the strings but I'm just getting those two notes now I don't think that you need to strum all of the strings but you should have them all covered in case you do and then you don't have to be so worried about the pick and you just strum so you want a little bit more energy in those kind of things. The, the energy that you put into the notes is as important as the notes themselves very often. So, uh, and then the pattern. So I'm just going to call out the fret that my first finger is in rather than trying to talk about them together because little finger will always stay in the r same relative position as the first finger. So we'd have two picks on the second fret, fourth, fifth, nine, seven, four, five. Seven, four, five, four, and one, and two, and three, and 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 four, and the last time. So the very last time it just steps up. Seven, nine. And then we'll back, back into another verse. Green Day are a really interesting band for me because they've got a really kind of strong pop punk ethos and punk music was generally a bit sloppy, but they're not sloppy at all. They play great. They play really in the pocket. The timing is bang on. The productions are huge. They have some of the best drums and bass sounds of all time and guitar sounds. So definitely they're a band that you should be practicing playing along with as well to try and suck in that feel, the time feel of playing along with those kind of recordings is really, really beneficial. Uh, definitely one if you're playing it on electric guitar to find a nice clean kind of acoustic -y emulation sound for doing the strumming parts, the acoustic parts, and then being able to jump on a distortion pedal and really rock out feels great. So uh, definitely one I'd recommend for any of you guys starting out in a band, especially if you've got two guitars, having that acoustic guitar and electric guitar going on together is just a it's just super fun so I'm sure you'd have a great time especially you've got like those nice kind of melodic solos going on as well they're not difficult parts to play but they're the perfect parts for the song I think that's some pretty important stuff to be digging into as well anyway really hope you enjoyed this one plenty more Green Day over on the website do go and check it out if you happen to be over on YouTube of course the usual stuff applies really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button slapping me a like and let me know in the comments what other Green Day songs you'd like me to do because there's a few on my list and remember you can vote for songs as well over on the website justaguitar.com forward slash songs there's a song request down, board down the bottom and I'm trying to tick off as many of those tunes that make it to the top 10 on that board as I possibly can hope you have yourself a fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon take care bye bye